coming up. And in hockey, they have a term for this. It's called the face-off. Get it? Oh my god. Spooky season is here with South Florida's newest haunted house. Plus, SoFlo Home Project host and design expert Elena Capra makes a fun Halloween centerpiece out of candy. We meet Coach Ron, and he shows us how to take your average bodyweight squats up a few notches. I'm still feeling that. Then Dr. Sam Rasool shares a few ways to keep your shoulders in better shape. All of that and more is today on SoFlo. <laughs> Welcome to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie. It's spooky season. I'm wearing my spooky shirt in a spooky place. Welcome to Nightmare Village at Extreme Action Park. That's where we're going to be spending the day today. In for some scares, and we'll talk to you about some fun health info along the way as well. But definitely in for some scares. So let's get in here. Anybody home? Hello? Can somebody let me? Oh. Welcome. Thank you. Uh... Thank you. <laughs> And this is the team of Sixth Sight Productions that puts on this wonderful haunt for you to enjoy. In fact, here's what Aniva found out when she chatted with them. Hey guys, I'm Aniva Zamak for Soul Flow Health and it's spooky season again. And that means it's time to get tricked and treated with a healthy dose of fear. And what better place to do it but right here at Nightmare Village, located at Extreme Action Park. Let's go meet the guys that actually put it together. I am here with the masterminds of Nightmare Village. So guys, tell us about how getting spooked is actually beneficial for one's well-being. Pretty simple, actually. Getting scared, you experience anxiety, and then that anxiety is released by screaming. It will also kind of just release endorphins, releases adrenaline, and actually kind of puts a peak in you that you didn't even know you had. So. The actors that you guys have here, how do they prepare mentally and physically you know, for these haunted houses? We always tell our actors, always go to your area and look around, see what you have around you, build your story around the room that you're in, and from that is how you start reflecting it to your audience. Have you guys ever encountered someone getting so scared that you guys had to take them out, or what do you guys do in cases like that? Ooh, yeah, well, sometimes they faint, sometimes they fall on the ground, they lose their shoes. Yep. We've had all kinds of uh, incidents. We do have a radio system and we have certain codes that we call out in case something like that happens. What's too much fear? Like, what, where will you guys draw the line where you need to start taking people out? Is there a limitation? There's no such thing. No such no, thing. No. Yeah. Get as scared as you want to. Yeah, absolutely. There is a limitation. Everybody's got different limits. But at one point, yeah, there's people that just say, hey, I can, and we respectfully just take them out through one of our exits. Do you guys keep a tally of all these? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. So going back to the well-being, what about, like, not only does it help people that are actually coming in here to visit and stuff, but what about the actors? Do you think they'll help their well-being as well? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's, it's an adrenaline rush for the actors as well. They look forward to it every night. And we have pep talks before every show. We just get amazing feedback. Scare actors are scare actors for a reason. They need some kind of release. Everybody's got different avenues to relax at the end of their day. Some people go home and read a book. Some people come out and scare people. So. What did you have to do to build these two houses and stuff? We built this from the ground up. We've got five of us here. We all have um, responsibilities of building. We generally start out with prefabricating all the walls. From there, we moved to setting up each room, decorating and painting it. Any advice for someone who's coming here for the first time or the second or third time? How can they have the best possible time of their life here? Leave reality behind. Everything that you know when you're coming in here, you're coming into a different world. As soon as you walk through those haunt doors, you're walking into our world and the world that we want to build for you and want, we want you to see. Have fun. Yeah, it's, it's scary in there, but really appreciate you know the actors, the scenery, yeah. all the blood, sweat, and tears that has gone into this. It's like you're going through a movie, so you, you tend to get that little bit more personalization. So just like the guy suggested, I decided to leave everything behind and walk through the houses with zero expectations. It wasn't so bad. Thanks, Aniva. Something looks different here. Oh no, I don't like this. I don't like this.
We are back at Legacy's Pembroke Pines location, and this time I'm joined by Captain Ron. Ron, thank you so much for being with us today. We're going over an oldie, but a goodie, and that's the squat. Yes, sir. Why is that important? It's something you could do anywhere, mm -hmm. and it's, I believe it's a basic starter point for anyone who's just trying to get a feel of their body. How can I hold my body weight? anywhere and anytime. So what I always like to do with my first timers or anyone I just start with, mm -hmm. get an assessment of how do you control your body. So today we're just gonna first start with a couple holds. We're gonna hold a squat. I know okay. you can hold a squat forever, but <laughs> traditionally we're gonna try to hold it for one minute. Okay, all right? And then we'll add a couple progressions and challenges as you go through. All right, all right. so where do I start? So, so first, if you just mind, turn your mm -hmm. body just a little bit just so we can take a look get at the, the 90 depth. Yep, angle yes, here. sir. So you're gonna sit it down as if you're sitting in a child's chair. Much lower, much lower. Yep, so now I want you to keep your chest up, mm -hmm. back straight. Hold that right there. And actually, you're a little below 90. Oh, yep. right Perfect, here? good, right yeah. Here. And now we're gonna challenge you to see how long you can hold that squat. All right, so we'll go traditionally one minute. Let's start for one minute. All right. How long do you think you guys, Hunter, can hold it? I believe he can hold it for more than a minute. So we're here, as we're here, I want you to think about your whole body. Your abs are engaged, your legs are working. Even your arms, it takes pressure and energy to hold your arms up. We got about 10 more seconds for that minute. How are we feeling? Shall oh, we? I'm feeling Let's it. Let's go for an extra 30 seconds. Nah, just you know, I think a minute's good. I think a minute's good. <laughs> and three, two, one, and excellent. Perfect. How do you feel? Good? Oh, yes. All right, excellent. So, I don't care how long you've been working out, how much you've been doing, that's what's beautiful about the squat, is yeah. it? It'll get you going. For sure, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what's next? So a progression. So we can do it, rep it out, going through the motion of the okay. squat. All right, so air squats. Mm -hmm. You can play with the speed. All right, so let's go again. Except this time I'm going to go to a slow count of five. Ready? Okay. We'll go down for five, four. Ah, much slower. Oh, 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 oh slow. okay. I see what yep, up slow. Five, four, three, two, one. Go again, down slow. Five, four, three, two, one. Give me one more like that. They're going to give me 10 fast ones. Five, oh four, three, two, one. Now 10 fast ones. Ready? Up again. Up, let's go, faster. Up, again. Up, let's go. Up, five. Up, five, three. Up, two. Now give me that hold again one last time. Here, right into that hold and hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it there. Chest up, back straight. Oh, you gotta love being a legacy. <laughs> All right, so our body is enough. So in the lifting world, okay. say how you lift. <laughs> <laughs> so just. <laughs> I had a little lap. <laughs> how to do a lap. Yeah, so if you were lifting 300 pounds, you should have the same concept of doing without eight pounds. Yes, yeah? yes. <laughs> All right. Well, Captain Ron, thank yes. you so much. Yeah. Give it a try at home. In fact, you got a DVR, run it back, give it a try, and let us know using at SoFlo Health. More haunted happenings, how gloomy weather affects your health, and shoulder pain solutions are after the break on SoFlo Health. Focusing on you, from your team of experts at Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center, South Florida's only National Cancer Institute designated cancer center. Rachel Maylove was just 42 when she received a diagnosis of breast cancer. When you get that call, it's, it's just shocking. Rachel went to see Dr. Kristen Rojas, a surgical oncologist at Sylvester, who specializes in a new type of cancer surgery called nipple sparing mastectomy, or NSM. The way I explain that to patients is that if your breast is like an orange, we remove the breast tissue, which is like the fruit of the orange, and then we leave the peel, which is the skin and includes the nipple, and then we replace the breast tissue that has the cancer with either a temporary or a permanent implant or tissue from another part of your body. Rachel had a bilateral mastectomy with immediate reconstruction, part of Sylvester's multidisciplinary approach to patient care. I do the cancer portion of the operation, and at the same time, our plastic surgery colleagues are also present and perform at least the first phase of the reconstructive portion. That was followed by 12 weeks of chemotherapy. Today, Rachel is proud to be a part of community events such as Dolphins Challenge Cancer that fund cancer research at Sylvester. She's grateful to Dr. Rojas and the entire Sylvester team. Her, along with the team here, they saved my life. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and in hockey, they have a term for this. It's called face-off. Get it? Oh my god. Everything's so scary here at Nightmare Village. And when you're scared, you experience an increase in adrenaline, high blood pressure, 
I'm forgetting, your forgetfulness apparently, oh, there's a honk. And then you also have increased blood glucose. All the blood rushes to your major muscles, which is triggering your flight or fight response. I'm choosing flight. We're at Las Olas Oceanside Park, which is a part of the Loop in Fort Lauderdale. Today I'm joined by Dr. Sam Rasool. It's beautiful out, but it is hot. I'm even sweating already. And that's also because I'm thinking about what's coming. And I asked Dr. <laughs> Sam to bring us some shoulder exercises and stretches. Low back and shoulders are the things that people seem to complain about their entire life. So Dr. Sam, what do you have for the shoulders? Well. Hunter, it's a two-pronged attack. When it comes okay. to the shoulder, a lot of people have them rolled forward, so what you want to do is two things, the two S's. Stretch the front and strengthen the back. Let me show you what I mean. First, you want to start by stretching the front. I can't emphasize this enough, guys. Stretch the front first before you start strengthening the back. So okay. what you want to do is I'm going to use Hunter as my inanimate object here of stretching. Don't objectify me. <laughs> so what you want to do is the three stretches. You want to kind of put your arm at 90 degrees, and you're going to stretch the big pec major in the front, the muscle in the front, just like so. You want to slowly come in, into it, and then when you come out of it, slowly come out of it. Number two, straight on just like so. Again, slowly going into the stretch and leaning, and slowly coming out of it. And the last but not least is 45 degrees, and again, slowly into the stretch, slowly out of the stretch. Now I'm going to take an educated guess and say that these bands are going to be for strengthening. Yes, you're a smart man and you know <laughs> that's what we're going to do next. All right. So we stretched out the front, now we're going to activate and strengthen the back. What you want to do is you want to make sure you focus on your shoulder blades here. It's about getting activation of your back which takes the pressure off your shoulders. So what you're going to do, take a stance about so, you want to take your width about shoulder width okay. and what you want to do is you want to keep a slight bend in your elbow but keep the same and slight bend. Don't be doing this, this is not a back row right, workout. Right, right, right. You want to keep it just like so, We're and when you out. do, yep, you're coming straight out like so, pull it towards your chest, and then back in. You notice how my shoulders stay in alignment, you want to notice how my elbows don't change the bend, and I'm activating my back. My head is up during this whole time. You do not want to jut your head forward, you want to keep it back, and just like that. The second thing you want to do is you also want to strengthen the back muscles right in the middle. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use you again, Hunter. <laughs> I want you to go ahead and hold my band. Now you can put this around a tree or a pole yeah. or you can do it with a friend. What you want to do is you want to get into position. You want to squat down, make sure you're secure, butt back, shoulders back, head up, mm -hmm. pull toward and hold. This is the most important thing about this exercise. You're pulling back, holding in that position and then releasing. You notice I'm not pulling up like yeah, this. Yeah. I'm not pulling, I'm pulling into my abdomen and that's getting that retraction or that drop down of the shoulder blade, just like so, just like that. Yeah, a common cue in athletics when you're training especially is shoulders back and down. And that's the case here, is, is shoulders back and down and keeping them there because what's gonna happen is they creep up as you feel tension in your life, as you're doing other things, it's just creeping up. So we wanna get them back down and strong. Exactly. Most people have already tight upper traps. Yep. So what's going to happen is when you start an exercise, you're naturally going to want to, your body's going to want to go to the path of least resistance. It's going to want to do this. You want to focus. That's why I say do this with focus. You know, you really want to be like, I'm pulling down, not letting these muscles activate. Yeah. Don't be a hero. Do it right. <laughs> and in an upcoming segment, we're going to show you how bad posture and not doing this can actually affect your organs. But again, that's for another segment. Dr. Sam, thank you so much. Thank you, Hunter. Of course. You know, speaking of being scared, there was a study that came out a few years ago that said that if you watch a horror movie, that you can burn about 100 to 200 calories in a 90 minute ish period of time, which is the equivalent to like a 30 minute walk. And, you know, it's probably offset by the popcorn and the milk duds. Right, guys? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It's a little gloomy out. The wind's blowing, it might rain any second. You're familiar with this version of South Florida weather. And if you're not, welcome to South Florida. It rains here a lot, especially during hurricane season. Regardless, in the tropics, we're bound to experience rain. But how does that affect our health? It's a great question, and we have a few fun facts of how it might affect your health. The first way you might be affected is by the wind. 
In fact, the wind is a big factor because it's blowing around all sorts of dirts and allergens. So when it's windy and not rainy, you may be experiencing a little bit of an allergy attack. However, when it does rain and there isn't much wind, it takes a lot of those allergens out of the air and puts them on the ground to bother you later. And when it's not bothering your allergies, it may be bothering your skin. There's less moisture in the air when temperatures are cooler, which weather like this can bring, and that causes your skin to dry out. Although it's probably less likely here in South Florida with how humid it is, it's still certainly a possibility, so just be mindful if you're noticing you're having dry skin. The next thing you might experience is a sad or kind of blasé mood. And that comes from the lack of the sun. When the sun's out, you're experiencing your body converting UVA and UVB rays into vitamin D. You also get serotonin from that exposure. And it's just different. It's still happening when the clouds are out, but when it's broad spectrum sun, you get it at a much faster rate and you feel better. I mean, come on. When it's bright and sunny outside, we want to hit the beach. When it's gloomy like this, we want to stay inside, and that's not great for our mood either way. You might have even heard of seasonal affective disorder. We've talked about it here on SoFlo Health, and it's sad. It's basically this. Sad state of the weather and a sad state for you. Here's one you may have heard. Oh, but you better get inside or you're gonna catch cold. Or you're all wet and you go into the AC, you're gonna catch cold. Well, not exactly. The only way for you to catch cold, the flu, or COVID is to catch the virus itself. So yes, it may be more likely that you become ill because you're gonna be inside trying to avoid the weather and you could be around other people who could have been exposed to some sort of virus, bacteria, or something else making them sick. But just cool weather and the water itself isn't gonna make you sick. We South Floridians may be used to hearing about hurricanes and tracking them and watching the different changes in the pressure and the wind speeds. Well, here's something interesting about the change in the pressure in the air. It also affects you and your joints. So those old wives' tales of, oh, my joints are creaking, I must have a storm coming. That's actually got some merit to it because your joints may feel a little more pain and inflammation when the pressure drops. Outside of the ways that the weather may directly affect you, it can also indirectly affect you because this sort of weather that is damp, gloomy, not much sun, windy, is a breeding ground for fungus, mold, and other icky things. In fact, standing water is a literal breeding ground for mosquitoes, which can carry all kinds of nonsense that we just don't want. So just avoid being around those standing puddles of water if you can. Try and keep your health up all year round so that you're not worried about it, whether it's rain or shine. And of course, during storm season, stay safe, listen to Local 10 News and all of our experts, and make sure that you're taking the proper preparations should we have a hurricane or something of that sort. But if it's just like this, stay inside. SoFlo Home Project host Elena Capra joins me to create a sweet centerpiece for Halloween when we return on SoFlo Health. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and we're still at Nightmare Village at Extreme Action Park. And you saw the first haunt earlier, but there's two haunts here. So I'm going to head inside and see what this one has to offer. This is SoFlo Home Project host Elena Capra. She recently invited me to make a Halloween centerpiece with her that's a sweet treat. So Hunter, have you ever built a candy centerpiece before? No. Well, this will be an <laughs> easy one, I promise. The first thing to create this beautiful centerpiece is a glass jar. The key to this whole thing and the beautiful stacking, right. the mason jar. Is that what holds everything up, kind of? Well, you would need a lot more candy to fully fill this, so it helps kind of keep it guided and, right. and use a lot less. So right. I'm going to have you pick whichever one you'd like to start with. Sure. I like I like the idea of the, the candy corn it's on the bottom, so we'll base. start with that, yeah. Yeah, it's actually a great one because that has a lot of weight, so it'll keep the mason jar right. in place. The marshmallows are great filler because right. they create also a nice contrast with the candy corns. And for those SoFlo health people that are looking at me like health, <laughs> sugar, all this, you gotta enjoy yourself, have some fun, and, and Halloween and holidays are the times to not stress yourself out about it and to enjoy yourself if you're doing the right thing the rest of the time, so. Absolutely. How am I doing here that's so far? That's looking great. Okay, so yeah, I think that's good with the marshmallows. Okay. We can go to our next layer. Great. Uh, jelly beans, maybe? Yeah. I can't believe how easy this mason jar in the middle makes it. So okay. I think the next layer, if you want to try, is oh the marshmallows. Boy. Those are just a great way to really okay. add another fun. Whether you want to do single or double row, okay. that is up to you. One set of these guys. Right in the middle there right somewhere. Right in there, yep. 
See that? Perfect. Now okay. use the marshmallows to fill behind that. Yeah, More is always better. Yeah, that yeah, looks yeah, yeah. great. See if I can kind of push them around in here. Let's Pick. do some pumpkins. Yeah, Let's those get some look pumpkins great. in here. Candy corn again. Let's yeah. do it. Started it with it. We're going to finish it off. It almost gets easier as you go from yeah, the Yeah, because from it starts up. building yeah. the layers and then you can, you feel confident. It's looking good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got some skill now. I've, no, this I've is acquired great. a new skill here. You can use any garnish. I picked up okay. some pumpkins. You can kind of just stick those okay. in and arrange. Well, this looks, Hunter, so good, uh, right? Now, I have a surprise for you. You did so great with this, okay. but we also wanted to give an option for healthy Halloween <laughs> treats that you can make. So I love this. This is just simple mozzarella sticks, and then you have little kind of clementine oranges. Yeah. Permanent marker, draw a pumpkin face, some little ghosts. So simple. Well, we really enjoyed having you here today. Oh, thank you and so I much. hope you enjoyed making a Halloween centerpiece. It was a lot of fun, and it tastes good, too. Well, absolutely. It's a perfect testimonial to our viewers at home that this is easy to make, and if not, great healthy alternatives. Certainly. Right? Okay, uh, what do I do? Oh, pick a door. Okay, well, this doesn't look good. Oh, it's not so bad. No? Uh, this one's not gonna be any better, is it? Oh, that's what I thought. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frank, and I'm getting kind of frustrated trying to find my way out of here at Nightmare Village at Extreme Action Park. And the whole vibe here is just creepy. Not my particular idea of decor. That's it for this week's episode of SoFlo Health. Thank you so much for watching and spending some time with us here today. As always, you can watch previous episodes of SoFlo Health on SoFloShows.com. You can follow us using at SoFlo Health to share with us what you're doing to stay healthy. And until next week, it's goodbye and good health. But if it wasn't that door or this door, it has to be this one. Oh my Jesus! Next week on SoFlo Health, we meet a local artist who has international appeal. He shares his artwork as well as his inspiring story after surviving many strokes. Plus, Miami aims to be one of the healthiest places in the world with the help of local innovators. Find out more next week. We'll see you then.